Dr Nina Ansari, an Iranian author and women's rights activist who joins me live now on the programme from Los Angeles. Uh, Nina Ansari, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, nearly three weeks uh, and these protests are growing, not shrinking. Your thoughts on what we've seen over the last 20 days? Thank you for having me, Matthew. Well, over the last three weeks, these protests have gradually evolved into what many Iranians, um, both in the diaspora and Iranian civil society, view it as a sort of a revolution in movement led by women and more recently even high school girls who are discarding their hijabs in school and chanting death to the dictator and freedom. We mentioned in the earlier introduction about uh, the alleged confessions from uh, the uncle of 16-year-old uh, Nikar, uh, uh, with sources telling the BBC the family had been threatened that other family members would be killed. Does that level of brutality shock you, or is that how this regime has had an iron grip for 40 years? It does not shock me in the least. In fact, they have also intimidated the family of Massa Amini, whose death by Iran's morality police initially sparked these protests. Um, they tried to cover up their crimes by saying that Massa had uh, pre-existing health conditions and she collapsed while she was being educationally trained to comply with the Islamic dress codes. The video and the photos subsequent to her death proved otherwise. Her family has been told from, my, from what I understand, not to speak to any members of the press. They're actually not picking up their phone in Tehran, in Iran, um, and also uh, with the latest with Nika's family as well. Given the horrific and abhorrent way that her their 16-year-old daughter was um, bludgeoned to death by security forces in Iran simply for exercising the fundamental right to freedom. We've seen protests over the years, over the decades. Uh, in your view and in terms of the people that you talk to, just gauge for us, is this any different this time, do you think? Or, or will it be put down as it has been before? It's absolutely different. Uh, Iranians are now, by and large, asking for an end to the Islamic Republic. They are, as I mentioned, chanting death to the dictator. In the past, Iranians have revolted time and time again, but it has never been uh, a protest for an end to the regime. Back in 2009, for example, they were primarily concentrated in the capital city of Tehran and basically were centered around people's grievances against what they felt were the fraudulent election results in 2019. Nationwide protests were primarily against the high cost of living and high gasoline prices. That has evolved today into a full-blown demand for regime change in Iran. So the characteristics today have taken a turn which is uh, very unprecedented, with also unprecedented acts of resilience and determination by women, men, and also, as I mentioned, young girls have joined in this movement as well. Yes, that has been so evident in recent days with uh, schoolgirls hounding out officials, being really bold in what they're doing, what they're saying, how they're protesting. In terms of how the outside world should respond, there is talk uh, of sanctions from the US, the EU and uh, many other governments. Uh, uh, what else should be being done? Because they're also trying to and negotiate and restore the Iran nuclear deal currently among various capitals. Matthew, back in 2015, a lot of Iranians were for the Iran nuclear deal. Today, they are not. They view it as a way to empower and legitimize and continue the regime's um, staying power. Uh, they do not want the Iran nuclear deal to happen anymore. Uh, furthermore, uh, beyond sanctions, which we've seen haven't really done much to alter the behavior of this regime, quite frankly, the opposite, because the regime has only intensified its crackdown on Iranian civil society. Uh, there needs to be the establishment of independent investigative and accountability mechanisms specifically to address the prevailing crisis of impunity, which has emboldened Iranian authorities to act against their people in the most inhumane manner. I also feel that um, international law practitioners need to assess 
and determine whether the international law community can come and support human rights in Iran and how to establish the rule of law in Iran as well. There also needs to be decisive and concrete action yep. by world leaders, 